And what a delight. Welcome to the webinar. Hello, I'm Parisa Shelton, like I just mentioned, and I am one of the co-contributors for Qigong Teacher Training and the Qi Club. I work alongside with my husband and personal hero, Mr. Chris Shelton. And um, today we are going to talk to you about the five steps to becoming a certified Qigong teacher. How does that sound? That sounds great. So in the meantime, as we just start getting rolling in to the webinar, if you feel called, please type your name, let us know you're here, let us know where you're watching from. We're coming to you live from Burbank, right outside Los Angeles, California. So we're so excited to be here. All right, and then make sure that you stay on until the end. Hello, Lisa in Ohio. That's awesome. Ohio. That's the one thing I really love about the World Wide Web. It makes the world a smaller place. All right, and we have Hillary from Topanga. Oh, right up on the other side of the hill, Topanga. Love it. Welcome, welcome, Hillary. Welcome to the webinar. So we are here. We're going to be talking about the five steps to becoming a Qigong certified teacher. Oh, Constantanza. Did I say that right? Oh, Constantanza. Oh, yeah. Will's wife. Hello from Gilroy. Yes. Welcome. Welcome. So glad that you decided to join us. Welcome to the webinar. Okay. So just a little bit about business. Yes, please make sure you stay on till the end. We have a special offer at the very end, but you have to stay on to watch it. And then the other thing is that if questions come up during the presentation, when Mr. Chris comes on, write your questions in the chat. And then at the very end, we will leave time for question and answer. We wanna make sure that we get all your questions answered. Okay, so now let's start to transition into the bigger portion of the presentation, Mr. Chris Shelton. He has been in the health and wellness healing business for 30 plus years. He used the modality of Qigong to heal from a lot of chronic stress and a dysfunctional childhood, all kinds of shenanigans from a heart attack at the age of 17. He was able to heal himself, transform not only his life, but also thousands, tens of thousands of people, probably millions of people at this point from all around the world, all shapes and sizes. I think of Mr. Chris as like a mechanic to a car. He is that to the human body. And he has such an in-depth understanding of the functioning of the internal systems and how emotions play a role in physical pain and allows us when we clear those blocked emotions to really be the best selves. Uh, he likes to say, we are here to empower you to be the best person you could possibly be. So in a moment, here we go. Mr. Chris Shelton, are you there? <laughs> We're actually in the same room. It's just, here's camera one, ready? Camera two. Are you there? Camera one, camera two. <laughs> camera, okay, two. camera two. Do I look kind of faded out or is that just my afterglow from this uh, beautiful <laughs> afternoon I, here in Los Angeles? You have a halo. <laughs> yeah, you're looking good. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty good at hiding my horn. So anyways. <laughs> Wait, I was so excited about today's presentation. Just real quick, can you tell us why this presentation is so important for those of us watching? You know, this is a, a, the five steps to becoming a teacher trainer, but the reality is, is that a lot of people that end up taking this course want to dive deeper into themselves. And in the level one, the 13 weeks, it allows for you to dive deeper to understand the practices of Qigong and how it applies to you clinically. You know, in Chinese medicine, we actually have a saying that the superior doctor is one that can prevent disease before disease sets in. The whole idea of this is for you to become your own superior doctor. What does that mean? That means that you become so aware of your body, of your internal organs and your systems that you can sense or feel disease before it sets in. Does that wow. answer your question? That's so deep. Everybody who has a body can everybody, benefit. Yes, everybody, yes. Yeah, so the reality is, is that Qigong, because there's, there's different, we're going to talk about those different schools of Qigong in this specific practice here. Uh, yes, after you finish the 13 weeks, uh, there is a certification and uh that is given to you and you can go out and teach with this we make sure that you are ready to go out and teach by the time we're done with the 13 weeks and and then also we assist you along the way as well too 
But again, the reality is, and I've been in clinical practice now, well, I've been studying like what Parisa said for over 30 years. I've been in clinical practice for over almost 23 years now. And throughout the years in the clinic at, at the Morning Crane Healing Arts Center in San Jose, California, which we still have a clinic, I've rented out to many different uh, practitioners, acupuncturists, massage therapists, Reiki masters, et cetera. And what I've found throughout the years is the wounded healer. And what does that mean? And we see this also in psychology a lot of times too. That means that people are describing or prescribing or recommending uh, systems and techniques to help other people, but yet they still haven't dived in deep to work on themselves or to not work on themselves, but cultivate themselves. Oh, okay. So we call this the most comprehensive Qigong teacher training program out there because what it does is it gives you the tools, like what Parisa said, to be the best version of yourself, but really start to process the past and present traumas in your life. And one of the things that I think happens with a lot of our clients is because of what Parisa and I do for a living, they think that we just sit at home and eat vegetables and meditate all day. Um, we do have a very blessed life and we're getting to live out our life purpose. The reality is, is that we have the same stuff going on in our life. We have family, we have kids, you know, we have every, we have all the same stuff, emotional stuff that goes on in our lives. But the key is, is that we have the tools to be able to deal with these traumas or with these situations as they come up. So, yeah. Wow, really... that's super cool. Okay, well, here's the slides. Take okay. it away. Okay, so the five steps. So first of all, what I want you to do is I would like for you to pause a second and maybe just close your eyes. And I want you to scan your body from head to toe. And I want you to take a mental note of how you're feeling right now. Because the goal of today, which I believe is on the next slide, is to, for you to feel better than what you did when you first signed on. Okay. So how do you feel? Just take on a scale of one to 10. Um, what we're going to be looking at today together is a tolerance or what can we do to have a tolerance for challenge and coming out of this pandemic. Oh my gosh, talk about challenge. We're not out of the woods yet. And because we work with the government, we have uh, contracts with HHS, you know, we get to see the reality of, of how this whole thing has affected people on a mental, emotional front. And the great thing is, is that we've had the opportunity to help work with the first responders and the patients of Santa Clara County to be able to give them the tools to deal with disease. So how can we handle a tolerance for challenge, especially in this ever-changing world that's changing so quickly? And what, what we're going to do is we're going to look at burnout because burnout is a chronic disease, uh, especially in cities and big cities where, uh, you know, in San Jose, it's a different vibe than here in Los Angeles. San Jose, there's a lot of high tech. Most of our clients are in high tech. They're working 12, 14 hour days, and we're seeing 20 year olds, people in the mid to late twenties already developing tremors, uh, signs of burnout. So we're gonna take a look at burnout and how to reverse that. Uh, we're gonna be looking at simple practices in order for you to take home today, to, in order for you to start to apply to your life. So that way you can have those tools for challenge, okay? So, and then also finally, last but not least, but to be able to guide yourself to understanding your life purpose. What does that even look like? So we're gonna, we're gonna be discussing a few things here. And once again, ultimately, our goal here today is for you to feel better and to have a deeper understanding of how these ancient practices that are thousands of years old can be applied to your life, can be shared with other people. And it's not a belief structure. It's not some kind of weird ism or cult. I've heard people say is Qigong a cult? No, it's not a cult or anything. Uh, but what it does is, is that it gives you the tools necessary to handle trauma and day-to-day -day stress, which we can't avoid. Even if you'd moved into the mountains at some level and hibernated away from society, uh, at some level, you'd still at times have a certain amount of stress depending on what was going on, whether it was weather, whether it was insects, whether it was animals, you know, or food, you know, so there's different types of stress. So the goal here is to really empower yourself, okay? And boosting our tolerance for challenge, and that's what we need in this day and age. The common word nowadays, besides the C word, I don't wanna say that word, but the C word is, is inflammation. Inflammatory diseases are on the rise, they're not declining. You'd figure after all these years of scientific development and advancement that you'd be able to see a decline in, in inflammatory diseases, but we're seeing a rise. 
And according to Chinese medicine, the reality is, is that the leading cause of inflammation besides poor diet, poor lifestyle habits, lack of exercise and lack of hydration and improper sleep is emotional stress and trauma. All right. So what can we do in order to build this tolerance for challenge? And also too, I, I must throw in there a tolerance for change. And we're seeing it uh, more and more nowadays that the youth that are teenagers uh, that are, uh, are supposed to be launching into the world um, are having a hard time launching because they have not developed this tolerance for challenge. So the cool thing is, is that we're able to give these tools also to our children in order to empower them to help also give them the tools necessary to handle challenge. Because when we have challenge and we learn how to work through it, it actually builds our immune system. It actually builds our ability to handle more and live ultimately a more peaceful life. So with that said, why don't we get started? Uh, one of my favorite practices is the center and balance meditation. I have this meditation on iTunes, it's on Spotify and on Google Play. And uh, just look up Chris Shelton, center and balance meditation. I also have a white pearl meditation on there too. I think it's only like a $1.99. The whole purpose of this meditation, just to let you know before we get started, is for you to number one, get you out of your head and back into your body. But number two, as I talked about uh, just a few minutes ago, to really get to know your body, okay? So that said, find a comfortable place to sit. If you want to stand and do this practice, you can. And if you're seated, you wanna go ahead and have your feet firmly planted on the floor. You're going to gently tuck the chin. By doing so, it presses up on the crown point and the top of the head. I'm going to curl the tip of the tongue to the roof of the mouth behind the teeth as if saying the letter N. Therefore, my breathing is long, steady, even and deep, in and out through the nose. And as I breathe, I'm going to allow for this air, this chi of life, to fill up into my lower abdomen. I'm going to allow for that abdomen to expand like a balloon as I inhale, then as I exhale, contracting the balloon and allowing the breath to leave out through the nose. All right, so with that said, we're going to gently close the eyes. Feeling that breath, long, steady, even and deep. We're going to focus first on the front of the body. And from here, imagine warm oil that begins to melt down through the front of the body, starting at the crown point at the top of the head. This warm oil melts down into the forehead, the brow bone, eyebrows and eyes, the temples, the cheeks, the nose, the side of the face, the front of the ears melting and pouring from the base of the nose into the lips, into the chin and jaw structure, flowing and pouring into the throat, the shoulders, the upper chest, the biceps, the elbow creases, the forearms, the wrists, the palms of the hands leading all the way out to the fingertips. Keeping a strong connection between heaven and earth, this warm oil now flows from the base of the throat, enveloping the entire chest, underneath the armpits and the flanks of the body. The warm oil touches every cell, every tissue as it flows through the front of the abdomen, through the lower abdomen, the waist, the groin, the thighs, the knees, the shins, the ankles, the top, the feet and toes all connecting, all flowing off deep into the ground. And from here, I want you to just take a moment to feel the entire front of your body from head to toe. And now feel the left and right sides of your body. Now feeling just as much in the back as you do in the front, begin to melt down through the back of the body, starting at the crown point. Allow for this warm oil to touch every hair follicle, every cell, every tissue. As it melts down behind the ears, the base of the skull. Flowing and pouring from the base of the skull into the neck, relaxing the shoulders, the upper shoulders and triceps, the elbows the forearms, the wrists, the back of the hands, leading all the way out to the fingertips. And now allow for this warm oil to relax the upper back, the mid back, 
the low back, flow in through the buttocks and the hamstring. Feel what's there, taking a mental note of what you're experiencing. As the warm oil melts down behind the knees, the calves, the ankles and heels, feet and toes, all connecting, all flowing off deep into the earth. And from here, feel the entire back of your body from head to toe. Feeling just as much in the back as you do in the front, through the left and to the right. Feel. And now connecting with what's going on inside of you. I want you to use your creative visualization and your mind intent to feel and visualize what's inside of you. Imagine a white light that begins to permeate through the crown point, illuminating your senses of your brain. You feel the left and right hemispheres of the brain. Visualizing and feeling the space between the brain and the skull. Behind the eyes and the nerves that connect from behind the eyes to the center of the brain. The bones of the face, the blood vessels, the capillaries, the muscles. The sinus cavity flowing into the inner ear, visualizing feeling of the vestibular system. The upper palate of the mouth, the teeth, the gums, the tongue, the lower palate, the tongue. And now traveling down from the base of the skull down each vertebra of the neck and throat, visualizing the arteries, the air passageway, branching off into the bones and fascia of the upper chest, back and shoulders flowing and pouring through the biceps and triceps. Feel the bones of the elbows, the forearms, all the small bones of the wrist, hands, and fingers. This white light continues to illuminate our senses, traveling down each cell, each vertebra, now enveloping the ribs. Feel the ribs as they wrap around to the spine on the back. You visualize and feel the intercostal spaces between the ribs. And now the lungs, the white light fills up into your lungs. The heart and pericardium, the sac that protects the heart. Flowing and pouring, this white light fills up into your liver and gallbladder on the right side of the body. The stomach, spleen and pancreas on the left side. The intestines, traveling down vertebra by vertebra, cell by cell into the kidneys. Feel your adrenal that rests on top of the kidneys. Feel the bladder, the hips, the tailbone, the bones of the legs, the muscles surrounding them, the center of the knees, the center of the shins and calves, ankles and feet and toes, all connecting, all flowing off deep into the ground. And just take a moment and feel your body. Feel all the bones, the muscles, be all the internal organs. And then skin. Feeling from the face down to the toes in the front, the back of the head, the back of the arms, heels. And from here, slowly coming back to the present. Slowly open up the eyes and there we go. All right, so how do we feel? You know, this is such a great practice to do and it's something you could do anywhere, anytime there's any kind of stress whatsoever or you just need to be able to focus, to be able to pull yourself back to the present moment. It's such a simple practice to do. Now, like Parisa said, my journey to get to this place to where I am right now, uh, it's been a long journey. And I never had any intentions whatsoever to be a healer or an instructor. I've always loved medicine, though, and science. My mom was a nurse. And as a teenager, I used to, or as a young kid, even before a teenager, when I was in elementary school, I used to read her uh, medical textbooks as well as her nursing magazines. And so science and medicine, uh, how the body functions, always has been a big interest of mine. And But there's a little backstory. And... Um, and this thing, this little piece here is called, Who Am I? It's not the story I identify with, but it's the story 
that got me here right now. When we break down the word qigong, qi is the life force energy that emanates through all living things. And gong is the skill in which to harness this life force energy, in this case, in order to improve your overall uh, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual well-being. I uh, did a lot of crystal meth in the day, and uh, by the time I was 17, I had my first heart attack from a meth overdose and put myself into type 1 dose, and then this had changed my path because I realized I was going to end was a nurse and she worked for this amazing chiropractor who uh, father, grandfather, brother, sister were all chiropractors, but also she had studied Chinese medicine and homeopathy and uh, she had a massage therapist working for her at the time and they wheeled me in there and he was a martial artist and uh, he started talking to me about chi. Well, now I'm 18 years old and I'm like, yeah, right. So anyways, I had other health problems too. I had severe sinus problems, digestive problems. I had uh, a slight case of OCD and uh, I had nothing to lose. I started taking these classes. And back then, this was over 25 years ago, nobody was practicing Qigong or very few people were practicing Qigong in the United States. And I kid you not, after about six months of doing these practices every single day, you know, you just wake up one day and you're like, wow, when did I stop? living on the pseudofed and the actifed when I stop living on the Tums and kaopectate, you know, you don't know when it changed. Like you can't, you don't, there's not a quite, there's not a pinpoint date, but you know that there was a change. And I thought, wow, if a movement, gentle movement and uh, guided meditation could create this much change inside my body, then there must be something to Chinese medicine. So indirectly, because of the Qigong, uh, that instructor I was training with supposedly was teaching Chen style Tai Chi and, uh, Chen Sao Tai Chi is, is a martial art. It's the oldest system of Tai Chi. Uh, a lot of people, when they hear of Tai Chi, they just think it's what old people do in the park. And um, so, yeah, so what happened was after I broke away from him and then I found uh, my Sifu, who I'm still with to, today, Tony Wong, who teaches, really teaches the traditional Chen Tai Chi. I mean, the root directly connected to Chen village in China, uh, the Hunan province. and. I started competing with Tai Chi in tournaments. I've been in Inside Kung Fu Magazine a couple of times, uh, uh, competed at the national level, I was ranked 10th in the US at one point. So yeah, so I dabbled with that too. And then and then finally with Sound Show, uh, with, with Kung Lee's uh, fight team, so introduced to Sound Show. Thousands of years ago, before man started to uh, evolve in, and lose their spiritual centers, they, and, and and paid more attention to the ego, they were enlightened enough to understand how these internal organs function. They were enlightened enough to understand that there are channels in the body and that there are actually points in the body and that these vessels and channels and these organs correlate to the seasons and correlate to different foods that you eat, correlate to different colors. And so that is the foundation of Chinese medicine is recognizing when the organism itself and its internal environment is not much different than the external environment. So just like there could be a discord in your external environment, whether wise or in your personal life, uh, that's also can happen on the inside. So when someone says to me, even if it's a disease that, that I've never heard of before, uh, and they say, can you help me with it? My answer is yes, because I believe that anything is possible. So yeah, that's just a really quick uh, backstory. Uh, you know, like I said, I wasn't planning on becoming a healer. Um, always liked helping people. Uh, I started becoming a butcher when I was 15 and a half. I was doing my AP studies in art at the time. Uh, ended up with two art scholarships. Also, I go to high school part time and uh, started my sophomore year and then go to an adult educational school where I ended up getting my class A state break license and my license for overhauling engines, et cetera. So, you know, I had this 
backup plan. Well, if I didn't make it as a butcher, well, then, you know, I'd be an artist. If I didn't make it as an artist, then I'd be a mechanic. Uh, healer was not on my radar, but I can tell you that I'm so grateful that uh, this happened and that the trauma that I had in my life, I'm very grateful that that has happened as well, too, because it is what has built my ability to have a tolerance for challenge. And the way that we do this is that we have to take a look inward. And a lot of times we find ourselves, I'm going to just use myself as an example, years ago when things were going haywire in my outside environment, I thought it was my outside environment or I thought it was somebody else um, causing the chaos in my life. In reality, in introspection from practicing Qigong, I realized that I was creating my own chaos. Um, I was creating my own disharmony. And once I had that realization through the practice of Qigong, then what happened was, was that not only did my health start to improve, as I talked about in that video, but I went on to being able to be more in tune with my body, to have this knowingness, to be able to share this knowingness and this uh, ancient style of healing with other people. So now what it is, is that now my main purpose in life, besides uh, seeing people in clinic, my main purpose is really about self-empowerment. How can I empower you the same way that I found these practices to empower myself? And then from there, my main goal is, is that then from there, then you go and share this with other people. Okay, so <clears throat> chronic stress. Uh, again, going back to inflammation. So we have the stressor, you know, maybe it's an outside stressor, maybe it's our job, maybe it's something that we're afraid of. Uh, Maybe uh, uh, finances have been uh, directly uh, affecting us. Maybe somebody in our family is sick, or maybe somebody's going through recovery or, or something that's a big stressor. There's a divorce or something. All right, so we have the stressor. We have the reaction to the stress. And then what happens is, is that this whole cycle begins where it starts to invade the body and starts to attack the body. And when we don't have the tools necessary in order to be able to process these stressors, then we end up with disease. And now I can give you uh, numerous case studies. I've helped thousands of people throughout the years. And majority of the patients that come in, um, unless it was a poor diet or uh, um, a substance abuse problem, it always come back, comes back to emotional problems or emotional stressors. But even if it is a substance abuse problem, it comes back to they're using, whether it's food, uh, sex, uh, drugs, or alcohol, they're using in order to cover up their traumas. So you see, it has a way of doing this round robin. And the problem is, is that when they get stuck in the body, then what happens is that it ends up showing up as disease. And some of the diseases that I see, actually, some of the inflammatory diseases that we're seeing, like Crohn's disease and colitis and Lyme disease, those types of things, or RA, the common common thread between those diseases is emotions. And even the even worse inflammatory diseases like Lyme or RA, the common thread with those patients that I've seen throughout the years is that they don't express anger or they don't know how to express anger. So this chronic stress after a while, what happens is, is that this is what creates the inflammation. Now there's inter interesting, back in 2014, a, a doctor, a famous heart surgeon named Dwight Lundell, Wrote, started writing papers on the leading cause of death with heart disease and what were the contributing factors. He found a few things. Number one, the statins that the hospitals or the doctors were prescribing to the patients were killing the patients. Two, putting patients on low fat diets. And what does that mean? The healthy fats like avocado, ghee, and coconut oil. Getting rid of those from their diets was also uh, creating more heart disease. And third, he said, was emotional trauma. And the best way he described how it affects your arteries is, is that he said, walk around with a piece of 40 grit sandpaper in your pocket. And for those of you that don't know what 40 grit sandpaper it is, it's very coarse. He said, find a place on your arm. And every time you have an emotional stressor, rub that area of the arm or your wrist over and over again. And he said the same type of irritation that you end up with on your arm from that sandpaper same type of irritation that ends up in the artery walls when you don't express your emotions properly or handle stress properly. So, and here was a doctor, and since then he's written numerous papers about the subject. So I was very grateful to see a physician actually acknowledging like, yes, 
um, uh, heart disease. And what's interesting too, is that heart disease is still on the rise as well too. A lot of these diseases, nephritis, which kidney disease, strokes, aneurysm, a lot of these diabetes, a lot of these diseases are actually on the rise and not on the decline. So how do we deal with burnout? Well, first is that we have to recognize, we have to watch out for the warning signs. What are some of the warning signs? Well, some of the warning signs can be that little eye tremor that shows up. It could be also maybe you're not sleeping well. It could be that you're uh, constipated or you're bloated. It could be that uh, you feel heart palpitations. Uh, maybe night sweats are showing up when you're sleeping or, or even during the day where you get hot flashes, for example. Um, and it doesn't have to be uh, somebody going through that change in their life to get hot flashes. Um, anybody could get them when burnout is setting in. So there's a number of symptoms and signs. Your body is always talking to you. It's always talking to you, saying, listen to me. And the cool thing about the style of Qigong that we teach is, is that this style of Qigong teaches you those connections of those symptoms with whatever organ imbalance that is the root cause causing those symptoms. So if you know that your eye tremor could be due to a temporary stress affecting the liver and your gallbladder, then you'll know what Qigong practices to do. So that's how we reverse it. So we reverse by managing the stress and seeking community support. And the cool thing too that we offer if you're not already a member is that we offer the Qi Club, which is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday from 8 to 8.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, we have uh, members from all around the world that join us on Zoom. And what we found is we started this during, at the very beginning of the pandemic, because we got to see the real numbers of the suicide rates, the increase in child abuse and spousal abuse and alcohol relapses. And so what it did was, and we didn't realize it, but it really gave people the tools to deal with the, all the unknowns that were happening during that time. And all the people that were in lockdown and, and in isolation, uh, it gave them the tools. And also not only that, but it gave them a community. And what happens is, is that even if you can't watch the show live, then we have the recordings for up to a week. And it really has empowered people to really develop this community. And when you have a community of like-minded individuals who seek to better themselves, to seek how to get out of pain and suffering and to really live the life that they are meant to live, then they are able then to share that. And that's, and if you're joining this webinar today, that's you, you're only joining, to me, if you're joining the webinar, it means that you're somebody who's seeking change, who wants to be a part of that change, and you're somebody that wants to improve their quality of life and also see the quality of humanity improve too. Uh, because I'm not going to get political here, but there's a lot of stuff going on in the world. And um, um, one thing that we can do is to be able to help to facilitate positive change and positive uh, development and love in the world is by helping to uh, uplift our resilience. So when we uplift our resilience, guess what? We're able to handle stress a lot better without suppressing. We're not talking about suppression here. We're talking about being able to process it as it comes up. So then that way it doesn't show up as disease. And then that way we are further able to help other people. So this gentleman here, Jim Rohn, is probably one of my favorite uh, speakers on character building, uh, financial independence. Um, uh, I, if you follow Tony Robbins, Tony Robbins studied with him. A number of people had studied with Joe, uh, Joe, Jim Rohn, excuse me, when he was alive. And he says this, he says, the same wind blows on us all. It's just the direction of the sail that determines our outcome. So I could have used the neglect and the child abuse that was happening inside the house as an excuse. Um, obviously it was, it was affecting me because um, I started doing drugs at age 12 and then um, had those, had those two heart attacks, et cetera. And then I had other health problems as a result. But when I was introduced to Qigong, I decided to, it was a really the pivotal point for me to change. Once I started to see the subtle changes in my health, also in my mental emotional health too, because one thing that I didn't talk about really dive into is that I used to have OCD, which is obsessive compulsive disorder. I didn't have it bad enough to where I, uh, I couldn't step over a crack or had my shoelaces had to be completely even, but I would check the stove 50 times maybe before going to bed. I would check the doorknob 
maybe 30 or 40 times before going to bed, make sure that it was locked. So Jim Rohn also said this too. And this is the interesting thing about developing this tolerance for challenge. And this is a great time and space to do this because there's so much going on in the world. If we can learn how to pull back to our centers, then what happens is that we become stronger for other people as well too. And one of the other things that Jim Rohn had said in one of his talks is that he went and saw Neil Armstrong give a, uh, a live talk about the trip to the moon. And Neil Armstrong said, well, you really only have two issues when you're going to the moon. One, how to get there. Two, how to get back. And he goes, then the rest you have to, you just figure out in between there. I'm sure it's a lot more complicated to, than that. But Neil Armstrong said this, and this relates to our life. He said, on the way to the trip of, to the moon, we had all of our gauges set for the moon. We had all the dials set, we had the proper fuel, and all the mathematical equipment to gauge us as we're, as we're going to take, take off. He said, but on the way to the moon, we had to make adjustments. Sometimes there were minor adjustments and sometimes there were major adjustments. And he said, if you did not make those adjustments and you missed the moon, you never come back. And so how this applies to our life is that yes, um, sometimes we have to make minor adjustments in our life. Sometimes our bodies are knocking on our back door, giving us warning signs that something, something bigger is yet to come. And sometimes we have to make major adjustments. Maybe we have to change locations of where we live. Maybe we have to completely overhaul our diet, or maybe we need to seek support from outside help. The whole idea is that you have a place to come back to, and that's what Qigong gives us, is those tools to do that. So again, I can't talk, about, uh, talk enough about these benefits. One, it's community. It, it's a vibration. Everything is a form of a vibration. This water bottle here has a sense of consciousness. If it didn't, its molecules would dissolve into nothingness. The couch I'm sitting on, same thing. Everything is a vibration. And so when we run at a more coarse vibration, then what happens is it allows us um, to get stuck in old patterns it increases the ability for inflammation and disease to set in, and then increases the ability for burnout to set in as well too. So the benefits of Qigong is that it helps to change the vibration. And the style of Qigong that we teach is based upon the five element school and the style that we're teaching in this uh, level one Qigong teacher training program is all meant to work with the five major organs of the body. Now, what's amazing is, is that these five organs also work with other organs and work with other organ systems. So guess what? If you have an imbalance, let's say you're suffering from migraines, uh, chronic migraines, or you have eye floaters or flowery vision, uh, those are liver dysfunctions. And a lot of times those liver dysfunctions will happen besides poor diet will happen as a result of repressed anger. Because a lot of us don't realize that different emotions attack different organs. So the one slide that I showed you about stress and how it compounds. Uh, in the West, we just call it stress. But the reality is, is that different stressors like grief, sadness, sorrow, loss, disappointment, shame, and guilt, they all affect the lungs. Abandonment, loneliness, lack of joy, overexcitation, mania, all affect the heart. But all the emotions actually attack the heart first. Uh, anger, rage, frustration, resentment, old anger, attack the liver and the gallbladder. Worry, overthinking things too much, attack your spleen, stomach, and pancreas. Fear and shock, what does it mean by shock? It means um, burning the candles at both ends, surviving a severe illness or surviving abuse or seeing something that was very shocking to the nervous system, that all weakens your kidneys. So the benefits of Qigong is that it helps give you tools to deal with the day-to-day -day traumas and stressors, but also old emotional patterns and old emotional stress, which it helps to improve the quality of life. <clears throat> so one of the things is that uh, when you become, again, when you become so aware of your body, believe it or not, after practicing Qigong for a while, and this is from my own uh, experience, for example, you could actually start to feel when organs are out of balance. For example, if I'm going to catch a flu, 
I don't feel it like in my sinuses or in my lungs. You know where I feel it first is in my spleen. So if I start to feel that my spleen is out of balance, then I know that, oh, I need to do certain Qigong practices. I know I need to add certain things to my diet, take away certain things from my diet, possibly take uh, some additional um, herbology supplements in order to head off that virus from entering into the body. So again, the whole idea here is for you to become your own superior doctor. You know, uh, the Yellow Emperor, uh, there's a textbook, a clinical textbook in Chinese medicine called the Su Wen, the Yellow Emperor's Classic of Difficulties. And what it talked about is that it, it talks about diseases. And in particular, interesting enough, the Su Wen really talked about viruses and bacteria causing diseases and deaths. Um, anyways, the Yellow Emperor in the, the Yellow Emperor said, to fight disease after disease sets in is like digging a well after one has become thirsty or forging one's weapons after engaging in battle. Wouldn't that be too late? So this is the thing. Let's ward it off before it does show up as something. So the great thing too, like I said a second ago, you know, these different emotions attack the heart, but, uh, or attack all the different organs. But the heart is the emperor empress of the body. It dictates how much of an emotion is going to be expressed or suppressed. And when we, we actually have a saying that the heart houses the mind, which houses the shen, which is your spirit. Okay. And so um, Deepak Chopra and Eckhart Tolle, uh, this is about seven years ago. We were at the Shrine Auditorium in downtown LA. And uh, I'll give you an example of, of this heart-mind connection. And uh, uh, what happened was, was that uh, Deepak Chopra was sitting down next to Eckhart Tolle. There was a small table between them and there was a vase with a little flower with a rose in it. So uh, Deepak Chopra said to the sold out audience, he says, does everybody see the rose? Everybody nodded their head. Yes, they see the rose. He said, now close your eyes. He says, does everybody see the rose? Everybody nodded yes. He said, now open your eyes. He said, nowhere inside your brain is there a rose. So what does this represent? He says that this represents that the mind is just a reflection of your reality, right? So that's the depth of this heart, mind, and body connection. So <clears throat> the cool thing, one of the regulations I would say in Qigong, well, there is three regulations. One we talked about at the very beginning briefly, which is breath. But the second one is mind intent. Our minds are very, very, very powerful. And there's all kinds of studies that show that we don't even use a fraction of our brain. We only use a small percentage of it. And what Qigong does, and there's been research done by Harvard Medical School, Stanford has also done research that Qigong practices, mindfulness meditation practices, actually help to uh, manifest more gray matter in the brain. And then once you're able to apply these practices, you'll feel more inner peace, and then you'll see that result in the outside world. So again, our inner self is a reflection of our outside world. What we think about, we bring about, it's all a vibration. So if everything is a mess inside of here, chances are things will get kind of messy in your outside world or get really messy, for example. So a lot of times, again, talking about myself, uh, for example, a lot of times we think, oh, well, um, this other person is what's caused this for me. But the reality is, is that it's what's going on inside of here. So um, when you have that kind of proper harmony and that proper balance, you really have a life of joy and a life of play. And that's what we should have is a life of play and a life of joy. And really, you know, you deserve to live the life that you want to live. So one of my favorite practices here that I teach in the Qi Club and teach also in this level one teacher training course is also in my book, Qigong for Self-Refinement. The favorite practice is shake it off. Did you realize that we are one of the only mammals or animals, animals on land that does not shake it off when something happens. You know, if uh, a dog is happy to see you or that dog is angry, that dog will shake from head to toe. Two ducks get into a fight. The fight lasts a few seconds. They swim away. The first thing that they do is they violently flap their wings. Why? Because they're conscious enough to know that they have this vibration inside their body. But as humans, we don't. A lot of times when we get agitated or we see something on TV or on social media that really upsets us and gives us a charge, we hold on to that vibration. 
going back to burnout, this further adds to the burnout, which then further adds to the inflammation and to chronic disease. So very simple practice to do. Are you going to demonstrate? I'm just going to demonstrate just from a seated position. And, and how we do it is, is that you just relax and inhale and <sighs> exhale and let it go. Okay. So next time somebody gets upset, your spouse makes you angry, <laughs> I'll go into another room. You just shake it off. So instead of suppressing it, which shows up as inflammation and disease, just shake it off. And the cool thing is, is that uh, you may have to do this throughout the day. So for example, let's say you had something really upset you, uh, you know, you shake it off. And anytime you have that thought come up in your mind again, and you feel that vibration in your body, that's when you shake it off. And that also, that simple, simple, simple practice will help to reduce inflammation so much. It's unbelievable. So the organ cleansing exercises, we have the five organ cleansing exercises, uh, which um, you know, we have the heart cleansing exercise, uh, which is very simple to do. We have the liver cleansing exercises. Okay. For example, this helps to cleanse the liver. All right. We have the spleen cleansing exercise where we twist, bring the hands together. We have a lung cleansing exercise that helps to cleanse the lungs of grief and sadness and sorrow. And then we have the kidney clearing exercises, which then helps to clear the kidneys of fear and fright and shock. So this is all the stuff that we teach. And again, we teach this stuff because it really is powerful. And the difference between this and I would say, as opposed to conventional therapy, um, this is my own experience with conventional therapy. Sometimes I would leave those therapy appointments and I felt worse because they picked off the scab but didn't give me any tools to deal with the wound underneath. Now, the difference with this is, is that if I have you do the heart cleansing exercise, I want you to focus on something that has created abandonment or loneliness or lack of joy for you or any of the emotions that attack the heart. I want you to feel it. Who's involved? What's involved? What were the sounds, smells? Was it inside or outside? I want you to bring it to the present moment. And then as you do the practice, as you exhale, you visualize it leaving out the hands like a dark cloud going several feet away from the body and deep into the ground. And that is so profound because, again, a lot of us don't realize that these different emotions get attached, not only in our tissues, but also in the internal organs themselves. Wow. So, all right, this is a funny picture. So like I said, I started becoming a butcher at age 15 and a half, uh, or that was my intention. Started working for a grocery store called Lucky's in San Jose, California. Um, uh, this is me when I was I kind of mocked a picture of me being a butcher. And what was interesting is that when I first got into, when I, you know, I did my a two year apprenticeship, had to go to school and such to become a butcher. I, I loved the craft of it years ago. It was definitely a, an art form, um, uh, believe it or not. And, uh, uh, but as time went on, I was, I think, cause I was dealing with all that death and, you know, and just the grind of the work it really was unfulfilling. In fact, I, 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 I disliked, even though I was making uh, pretty good money, I disliked uh, going to work. Um, and so if you're somebody who is thinking like, well, what can I do to further enrich my own life? And then also to enrich the lives of others, then becoming a teacher trainer is the first step. Now we do have a level two teacher training course and then launching in August of this year, we do have a curative program where I teach the, in the clinical setting, I teach what I, how I treat patients in clinic is something that also I treat, uh, share with other people. So I didn't realize that Qigong was going to be my life purpose. Um, but after seeing thousands and thousands of transformations happen and being the facilitator, just the facilitator, teaching the stuff or working with patients one-on-one, -on -one, um, I realized like, oh, wow, I actually have found my life purpose. And I was at, we were at a workshop at Yosan University here in Los Angeles several years ago. Uh, Dr. Mao Xing Ni uh, was, uh, who's a licensed a doctor of oriental medicine. Also, he's a physician as well, too. Him and his brother. Uh, they're also 38th generation Taoist and Chinese medicine masters. Anyways, it was a workshop uh, full of uh, business people, attorneys, doctors, etc., and, um, and he asked the class, he said, how many people enjoy their career? And only a small handful of us actually rose our hand. There's about 70 people in the class. 
And he said, you know, this always stuck with me. He said, you know, before you come into this life form, you sign a contract with heaven that you are to find your life purpose. Because when you find your life purpose, this is how God, the universe, whatever you want to call it, this is how it emanates itself through you when you found that purpose. And that purpose could be anything. And if you like helping others, and if you like being a contributor to positive change in the world, then this is definitely something for you. Wow. So this is the part where we bring on Michelle Pocabla from Monterey, California. Talk about finding life purpose, looking so good. And uh, Michelle is a teach level two graduate and also is joining us for the curative program. So welcome, Michelle. Hi, thank you. I love how we made the Zoom work. That's so awesome. Yeah, you know, sometimes just stop working on it and, you know, let the universe figure it out. That's right. <laughs> um, real quick, could you just let us know where you were when you first signed up for the teacher Qigong teacher training course? And maybe what were some of your hesitations at that time? Oh, definitely. Um, good questions. Um, well, first, I've done sports massage for 30, now 32 years. And um, so that's, that's kind of been my life's work. And Chris, I totally relate to, you know, I love what I do. Even I will, no matter what, I'll probably never stop like a painter doesn't stop painting. It's kind of feels like that. And um, I was doing the uh, classes that you to offered during the beginning of COVID. And I knew within probably the second day of that first week with uh, Eric, the trainer, because it was a free thing that we were doing. Um, it was just like, I found my teacher. I wasn't looking for a teacher. It was like the last thing I was looking for. <laughs> and uh, there you were. And I went, I, I just, it just fit and it resonated. And, um, decided when this class would offer that we're talking about today, I felt like I had, it had so many, it was put the pieces of the puzzle together. Like the, the piece in the middle had been missing and nothing felt like it was missing in my life, but there were still things that um, I didn't understand. Like, why is this happening? It's not just to myself, but to my clients or to people in my family. Um, I woke up my story was that I woke up on my 50th birthday in the morning with my shoulder frozen. And I was like, no, 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 no. That doesn't happen to me. I fix those things. Like, this is like not my reality. And um, I'm surrounded by all these healers and chiropractors and acupuncturists and PT, like just all over the place. And we couldn't, I got it taped, you know, I'm, it's just not moving. So with starting to learn some of the basic tools in the beginning, I started to see it opening up and I started to see it getting better. And I liked the fact that it was really easy. Like I wasn't in a place in my mind, especially with the lockdown and like extra kids here, like, you know, life was totally in chaos. And the last thing I wanted to do was some really complicated forms. Like that was not attractive to me at all. But this was so simple. I could drop right down into my body and it didn't take very long and really start to see change and like specifically my right shoulder. Um, and once I started having that value to it and this class was offered, I was like, okay, I can really understand myself better, especially at the stage of my life, <sighs> which leads me to some of the doubts. I was. Um, not working and very much and the money was an issue I didn't want to spend money it felt a bit frivolous at that time for me where I was at and it's hard for me to spend money on myself and um so that was that was something I had to go through and then and to allow myself to to receive and then secondly it was like where am I going to find the time I literally I don't think you guys remember this I had a class in the garage one day, because there was like no privacy in my house. <laughs> it's not in the toilet. <laughs> so it was like, it was like, how am I going to like, how am I going to do this? But I just trusted that, you know, the teacher appears when the student is ready. I was like, okay, like, uh, let me just, this is what I'm supposed to do. And I'm so grateful because I feel like not only have I been able to help myself, 
I am now taking this to my clients. And then Michael, my husband also has been doing not the classes, but um, the Chi Club and, and he does a regular practice, but we give a free Zoom class every Monday that we started, gosh, 18 months ago, if you can believe it. Um, every Monday on Zoom, five o'clock Pacific Standard Time. And we just love it so much. It's like, it's these tools are so easy. Like I'm so Italian right here. Like I'm not Italian, but like they're so easy <laughs> that everyone, they should teach this in elementary school. Like, like this should be part of PE. So just, you know, here kids, you're mad here, let's do that. <laughs> so, um, and I, another last, I wanna, Chris, you talked about shake it off. Um, I have a 16 year old daughter. That's our, we have five kids, but that's the youngest one. And, you know, she kind of rolls her eyes and, she, you know, she's, all my kids have grown up and all this kind of stuff. But even the six year old, when she gets mad now, she'll be like, <laughs> and she does it. <laughs> so it, it's kind of like uh, throwing a pebble in the water. It's affecting people in my life where they don't even realize it. So, and I wouldn't give it up for anything. That's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you so much. And, um, you know, and, uh, uh, Michelle is in the, like she said, she's been in the healing community for quite some time. She has her own product line, Human Minded, and um, uh, where she has solves and oils and things to help you with, uh, with all kinds of things from inflammation, muscle pain and such. And uh, again, I think one of the things, Michelle, that you said in the very beginning is, that struck me the most is when you said, um, I don't like investing in myself, especially in a time where things might be kind of crunch, you know, and how many of us are like that, where we don't want to invest. We give to our kids, we give to the rest of the family, but yet we don't give to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's wow. beautiful. That's beautiful. So if someone might want to get in touch with you, what would be the best way, Michelle? Uh, good question. Uh, Michelle, the two L's, at humanminded.co, or you can follow us on Instagram and message me. Um, that's always a really good way. That's awesome. humanminded. <laughs> and then um our shigong we have we started an instagram for it to kind of keep people up to date it's called where w-h-e-r-e -E underscore shigong <laughs> <laughs> clever <laughs> so we we're finding ourselves traveling again and we're like oh now where is she <laughs> that's great oh, perfect. perfect okay well thank, thank you so, thank you so much, much for your for, time yeah. and for joining us this and, evening that worked out great and um, please, if you anyone on this webinar has any questions and you just want to talk to me directly, I, please get a hold of me and we'll have a conversation. Well, thank you for thank that. Thank you so much. Yeah, and like what Parisa said is that, um, you know, uh, she, Michelle is going to be one of the students of a finished level two that are going to be going into the curative program. And, um, and so we're really excited for that to start and to really help to share this knowledge. So that way people go back into their communities and really help people at a deeper level. So. Thank you, Michelle. Thanks, Michelle. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <clears throat> yeah. So, what is the life purpose? And uh, uh, you, you know, and I, you have to. The reality is, is that um, when you find that life purpose, and if this is something that is uh, seeming, you know, very attractive to you, and one of our other Qigong teacher trainers, Yvette, uh, who met us with, uh, she had RA when she came in, and what happened was, was that this was about four or five years ago, I think now, and uh, she had RA. And uh, what had happened was, was that we were sponsored by uh, San Francisco Bay Wildlife Society, also sponsored by Open Space Authority. And I would go out to these different parks and refuges uh, to teach Tai Chi for free or Qigong. It's actually Qigong for free for the public. And she came and she was bedridden. A mother of, I think, four kids also, uh, four kids, uh, she was a hairdresser and was bedridden for two years. Came to one class at Don Edwards Open Space, uh, Don Edwards Park there in Alviso, and saw the differences immediately that she started then practicing uh, the 30 days of Qigong that I have on YouTube for free. From there, then she did the level one and level two. And then what happened was, was that she, she cured her, she, she remedied her own illness and is now alive living a life of abundance uh, she actually teaches qigong uh, she actually got married and was able to transform it so the great thing is is that now she's giving back to the community when she was struggling so much she actually got to see the benefits for herself just like i got to see the benefits and that was the catapult for me to be able to continue my studies in qigong and chinese medicine 
And when you find your life purpose, you know, you have that joy of presence and you're helping others. And, um, and believe it or not, you could actually have a really great dream job because right now with everything that's going on in the world, we need more and more people like yourselves out there spreading these ancient practices to empower people to give them hope first and foremost and give them the tools necessary in order to deal with what's going on in our in our in our society and ultimately when you give like that what do you what are you doing you're spreading love and that's the number one thing so um so yeah i can't talk i can't not talk about it so anyways we have this level one qigong teacher training program and um you sign up, you not only get a Qigong teacher trainer shirt, you get a binder. Uh, you also to get my book as well as the book. Uh, there's a, another book from Dr. Mao on the five health on the five personality types and such. And, and then uh, what happens too is that each week we actually will go ahead and every Monday what happens is, is that there's four videos that are downloaded and there's PDFs. Uh, that further help to assist in the teaching practice. So let's say week number one, we're covering the white pearl med meditation. Uh, the reading assignment will from, be from my book, the white pearl meditation, how to do it. The four different videos, number one shows you how to do the practice and then commonly asked questions and then uh, peace pep talks um, and then tips for teachers. And these are all different tools in order for you to help to understand the practice even more. And what happens too is, is that, uh, like I said, because of the so many different ways that we're uh, giving you this, the same information, this is what really helps to peel away the layers. So again, even if your desire is not to go out there and teach, this program is the program designed to help you really live the life that you're meant to live and really give you the tools necessary to help to process and transform disease. So here's Tom and Michelle, you know, both of them, uh, Michelle, his wife uh, did level one, right? And uh, Tom did level one, and level two. Tom actually uh, also uh, like Michelle uh, or Tom uh, uh, Walsh uh, teaches for us for the, for the county. Um, we, because uh, we have, like I said, we have these government contracts and he teaches for us. And he's also signed up for the curative program that's starting um, in, in uh, August here. And just a, well, just, uh, just a super, super wonderful guy. But anyways, you know, as you can see here from what he was, uh, from what he said in his uh, testimonial, you know, the Qigong really helped him transform his life and has really given him the tools necessary to be able to understand how his body functions, how his emotions actually show up as, as a pain or, or illness. And has been something that is a valuable tool that not only does he applied to his own life, but he gives to his children. So um, Michelle, who was just on speaking, what's funny is, is that we have actually a couple of Qigong teacher trainers that, uh, um, that are high school teachers. One of them is actually a PE teacher and actually teaches the Qigong to her students. So yeah, so we can't talk enough about this. So once again, um, what you'll receive, ultimately you're going to receive uh, tools and techniques in order to build your tolerance for challenge. Uh, you're going to learn the foundational practice of Qigong uh, that helps not only your own well-being, um, but you know, really helps to extend your life. And that's one of the other things that Jim Rohn said too. Uh, he said, you know, if you write a book about heart disease and it costs, costs $29.95, what you're paying for is you're paying for the publication, you're paying for the pages, et cetera. And uh, he said, but the reality is, is that if that book on heart disease helps to save somebody's life, then it's priceless. And that's the same thing with these Qigong practices, it's priceless. And the great thing also too, from this program is that once again, you can become a teacher, but more importantly, you get more in tune with yourself and with your environment. <clears throat> okay, so here we go. So this is, uh, da, 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 drum roll, please. So level one starts here, May 16th. It's a one-time investment of 1995, or you can break it down to three monthly payments, uh, six, uh, 696, or five monthly payments of 420. And um, sign up today. 
uh, we have you know, sign up. Uh, you have till the May fifteenth to sign up to get this uh, these uh, discounts. Um, but either way, you know, we hope that you have enjoyed this webinar today. And again, I hope that you walked away with some takeaways. So before we part ways here, um, I want you to to close your eyes and I want you to evaluate where you're at right now. Are you in a better place than what you were than what we started a little bit over an hour ago? And if the answer is yes, then chances are this is something designed especially for you. So once again, on behalf of Priest and myself, I thank you so much. And now, is there questions? Well, yeah, Chris, I was just going to say that was an excellent presentation and we're getting such great feedback from oh. people all around. I, oh, I have yay. a TikTok live. I, oh, I TikTok just, live. yeah, oh, but I keep, keep dropping the it. phone. <laughs> um, but anyways, we did have a question from um, Truth Seeker 1111. Wow. You know, it's funny, Truth Seeker 1111 is that Priest and I got married 11, 11, 11 at 11. <laughs> 11 is a special number mm -hmm. for us indeed. But she's wondering about, can you do Qigong on animals and how yeah. that relates? Yes, you can do Qigong on animals. And what's interesting is if you go on my Instagram page and scroll way, way down, you'll see that I've had more than one dog that uh, patients have brought in. And I'll give you an example about, uh, about how emotions affect not only ourselves, but how it affects our animals. So I had a longtime client. She was a San Jose police officer and, uh, and she got these two dogs, these beautiful dogs. And uh, after a couple of years, what had happened was, was that the one dog started having seizures. So she paid for me to come over to her house. And when I was working with the dog was palpating the dog. What I realized is this dog had a lot of anxiety. And then I realized from, I don't want to sound too weird or anything, but um, I, I told the client, I said, you have to work on your own anger. If you work on your own anger, the dog's seizures will stop. And guess what? It was a wake-up call for, for the owner, like, oh, my emotional state that I'm coming home with because of the intensity of her, of her job is of, actually is affecting my dog. And guess what? Uh, she changed. She started practicing these Qigong practices and the dog's, dog's seizures, not only did she change, but then the dog's seizures stopped. But yes, you can definitely palpate um, and you can definitely uh, connect. The, there are acupuncture channels and points on animals, on cats and dogs, well, all animals. Uh, most commonly when we hear about acupuncturists working with uh, uh, or veterinarian acupuncturists, you know, it's mostly dogs and cats. But to answer your question, I would, yes, definitely yes. Wow, thank you so much. Okay, we have another question from Lisa in Ohio. Hi, Lisa in Ohio. Thanks so much. Excellent presentation. Thank you. I wondered about the curative program and oh. what type of practices you learn as well as who is this course designed for? Beautiful. I love TCM and I'm an Ayurvedic practitioner. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Okay. So I don't know. So here's kind of the long, short story. Um, and this is why we're in Los Angeles is because um, I realized that, uh, you know, this gentleman down here in Hollywood, his name is Eric the Trainer. You can look him up, Eric Fleischman, Eric the Trainer. He's a Hollywood physique expert. Um, anyways, about 10 or 11 years ago, uh, he heard about what I was doing in the San Francisco Bay Area because my old fight coach is Kung Lee. Kung Lee was a professional UFC fighter uh, and strike force fighter. Um, but also I was Kung Lee's Chinese medicine practitioner as well too. So. Uh, you know, he got me all kinds of publicity up in San Jose, like Showtime, NBC Sports. Uh, the UFC has been to my office twice. Uh, Vietnamese television from Los Angeles has been up there to the Bay Area. And um, anyways, when I flew down one time, because he wanted, uh, uh, Eric the trainer wanted to meet me, he said, Chris, nobody's doing what you're doing in the Bay Area down here in Los Angeles. I said, give me a break, Eric. This is Los Angeles. There's millions of people here. And he goes, no, I know the who's who. And at first I thought he was full of it. But no, he really does. And so we started flying down back and forth, saying that Airbnb is all over the place, getting the feel of the land. And he gave me all of his high profile and celebrity clientele. And in fact, I was on, on tour with him with Def Leppard and Journey a couple of years ago, right before COVID, um, uh, treating the band members on, on, on tour. And so I had to ask myself, because I treat everybody the same. I don't get starstruck by anybody. Everybody is, you know, I don't care if you're the stay-at-home mom, the janitor, or, you know, some rock and roll star. We're all human. We all have emotions. We all have internal organs. 
So what happened was, was that I realized, okay, my next big stage is television, is to be able to share this with the world. And in fact, what has happened here recently is they shot a short film that's going to be presented at the, um, all the film festivals um, on what it is I do, what I came from, uh, and then uh, Priest and I as a, as a husband and wife team, but then also the healing results that I can teach to other people. So that's the backstory. So this curative program is set up for anybody that wants to help other people. So the film, what's the big deal about the film? Well, what I'm hoping for is that the film festivals, not only will it inspire people, but it will make people say, I wanna study with Chris Shelton because I wanna learn what he does. And my whole purpose then, or our whole purpose then is that for you to go back into your communities and help other people. Because when I'm in clinic, I can only touch one soul at a time. Now, on a podcast or in an article or a key, as a keynote speaker, I could touch more souls, sure. But really, to be able to see the transformations of disease and chronic pain, I could teach this to other people. So it's a two-year intensive. And uh, the prerequisites are level one and level two of the Qigong teacher training because we want you to understand and feel qi. We want you to understand the basic principle philosophies of Chinese medicine that we gently start to introduce in level one and level two. And also too, um, going back to the beginning of the talk, we want the healer to really heal themselves. I mean, I've been doing this for 30 years. God has not given me the golden ticket. Like, all right, buddy, the rest of your life is easy. You got it all figured out. No, I don't. Um, but I am on a mission of continual refinement and to work out my skeletons in my closet. So this curative program, it's um, two years intensive. The first year is the foundations of Chinese medicine, but we're not going through all the foundations. Um, uh, towards, uh, it's going to be a live on Zoom, et cetera. And then what happens is, is that we will meet after the foundations part, then we actually will meet uh, a couple times a month in person or live on Zoom if you can't fly in to do the practical, which will then, when we start to do the diagnosis. And, and what we're looking at is tongue diagnosis, um, um, uh, a, pulse. A, a, a pulse diagnosis, a, a, a abdomen Fingering. diagnosis, um, a nail diagnosis. And then uh, we have a separate class that's on the whole facial assessment system. And, and all these things, what I, what's happened is over the years is that after studying with my Tong style acupuncture teacher, I was able over the years, over the last 20 some odd years to develop a system that I could teach to other people. And the whole idea, once again, my whole purpose is that I get people from around the world that want to study with me so they can go into their communities and help other people. And we have tons of testimonials. My second book that's coming out this year is on how to fix back problems yourself. And those remedies on how to fix back problems, for example, uh, that I give for uh, the consumer to fix, to be able to fix themselves um, in, the, in the curative program, then we dive in deeper with the hands-on of, okay, this is how as a practitioner, you would apply it to a client. So that, wow, that's, that, that's a long-winded answer. Yeah, so that's good. Sorry about that. I always say my man likes to talk. Yeah. And actually, interesting enough, and speaking of Topanga, Lisa found us from the podcast that you were just on here for the truth. Oh, here for the truth. Yeah, yeah that was a great, that's those guys so cool. were amazing. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Wow. Well, thank you so much, Hillary. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So were you going to say something? Was that it? Oh, not Lisa. Oh, did I say, I'm sorry, <laughs> Hillary, Hillary. Silly oh, Silly oh Hillary. Oh my gosh. Oh, because there was two questions that came in. I'm sorry. Yes. Hillary. Oh, thank you so much. LOL, as we wind that down, that was so good. But thank you so much. And as we wind down here, Mr. Chris, do you have any closing thoughts that you'd like to leave us with? You know, uh, Eckhart Tolle says this best. What we think about, we bring about. And when we talked about, when they talk about in the news and such, the war on drugs, the war on poverty, the war on hate, the war on disease, all that does is it creates more of that thing. So what this program is designed for is for us to change our paradigm, to change what we're saying and saying, no, it's not a war. 
it's a methodology that we can change ourselves. And if we change ourselves, it's a ripple effect. And that ripples outward and helps the whole planet. So the more and more people that we have that want to be a part of this ripple, then that's what this is all about. So once again, I want to thank you guys for joining us. Sorry, it was supposed to be an hour. It's an hour and 15 minutes. But thank you so much. We're having another webinar tomorrow morning at 10. So if there's anybody, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, so is there any, if there's anybody you think would benefit from hearing this talk, from hearing about these practices, especially if they've never even heard of Qigong before, uh, please have them tune in. But um, uh, I, guess, uh, I guess that's it. And the, and the last thing, again, I just really, I'm grateful that you give me your time and attention and give me the opportunity to speak about this. And I hope that everybody has a blessed evening. Blessed evening and okay. go to qigongteachertraining.com before May 15th. If you're interested in signing up, we'd yeah. love to have you. Love to have you. Okay. All right. Signing Thank off. you. Signing off. Hillary, Lisa, Michelle, we love you guys. Say la chi. Say la chi. <laughs>